Welcome back, Zero K fans. This is Shadow 3 with another exhibition match. This time it's going to be Corvus Cordax versus Rymark on Dual Icy Run. So let us begin. Now, Corvus Cordax is starting in the west side of the map, going for a Heavy Tank Factory, while Rymark starting with Jump Bot Factory. A little bit unusual, given this is a rather flat map. It's not a bad one, though. I mean, Icy Run is a map that's basically take the top or bottom half of this and that's all it is which I think is inappropriate for 0k though it, it comes up a surprising amount of times in team maps however dual icy run I think is great it's a good mix of choke points and open space it's a bit flatter than I'd like but it does make that work pretty well I think there is enough there's enough obstacles in there that you can make use of spiders and so forth to some extent and also for bots to hide out in while still having a flat land for vehicles to go around and choke points enough to have some sort of strategic defense so I think it's a great map I just think it gets a bit of bad rap because it is basically just icy run doubled and mirrored over but that's really what icy run needed anyway Rymark going for early pyro and freaker so just quick start not actually attacking with the pyro surprisingly enough while Corvus is starting out with a couple panthers and Rymark is pointing out that in the chat because he's watching this game now that there are apparently no connection issues with this game unlike the last match that I cast or last replay I casted with between him and Corvus which did have such issues that I casted about five minutes ago this one apparently is a perfectly valid game that goes as it looks so anyway Corvus very quickly going to the center he's being very aggressive pushing the center while Rymark being much more defensive starting in the southeast corner of the map and very slowly progressing towards the center he seems to be trying to take the south side more than anything this Freaker may in fact go north, however, and it is in fact going north, so he's going to try to take the eastern side, starting from the south and going up to the north as well, while Corvus is taking the center very directly, and from here he can easily just expand, once he gets a nice defensive line, he can easily expand around the back and take all these metal spots. Now, pointing out here that these metal spots are all the same metal. All of them are 2.25 metal, or very close to. doesn't have a Lewid metal map, but it does have relatively even metal amounts in every single spot and Corvus setting up radar as well in the center of the map so Corvus is going to have a decent view not going to have a view of this north and south section but we do see on his point of view he does have well his entire west side of the map between these two radar towers and a decent view of the center he does know where Rymark is positioned or at least part of Rymark's positioning that Rymark has expanded a bit Rymark for his part however only has line of sight he does not have radar he's pure line of sight he does have a bit of knowledge in the center, but he has no idea where Corvus has set up. He's probably assuming that Corvus is somewhere being defensive on his own, and probably doesn't know that Corvus is actually right in the center of the map, which is not what he'd expect. But yeah, Corvus is right here. It's where he actually is. Rymark about to find out pretty soon, though, and that's going to be a rude awakening. However, Rymark continued to expand along the north, keeping his expansions up. I mean, he is getting the Metal Lake Stratus. He's taking what he needs. Getting a few puppies as well, which might be a little bit early, but hey, they're not bad scouts. However, given the lack of reclaim on the map so far, I don't see how they're going to be cost-effective. This is before the puppy cost change, though. The puppies actually have been nerfed slightly. Their cost, I believe, is now 75 instead of 50. Unless that's, I think it's actually, no, that's the reclaim cost. That's the amount of reclaim they require in order to reproduce, I believe. They, co they still cost 50 to build from the looks of it. Anyway, Corvus has been spotted. Rymark fully aware where Corvus is, and a couple Panthers coming in here to try to deal with Rymark's commander, which is a battle com. Rocket launcher auto repair battle com. Soon to be stunned, however. Gonna get is it gonna get rid of one of the Panthers first? No, it will not. Gets stunned out first, but looks like it manages to not be stun locked forever. Managed to get some shots off in between getting stun locked, but it's taking quite a lot of damage. One of the Panthers goes down, but the killing it does manage to stun Rymark's commander long enough, and it does not die. The two Panthers do die thanks to the puppies that just managed to save the commander. Bit of a close call, but does pull it out. While Corvus continuing to build more Panthers, getting a few more up now, and has a welder going in the back. This is what I mean. He is expanding around the back. He has this whole section to himself. So right now, Corvus has 22 metal to Rymark 16. And Rymark also not building a whole lot of power either. There's a few power plants here in the southwest, and he has his commander's power income of 6. That's about it. Well, Corvus, on the other hand, has solar plants just littered around the map, but even then, he only has one extra compared to Rymark. Corvus going, he has Heat Ray Recon Com. Should have pointed that out as well. So, we'll be able to jump in and or jump out and deal 
decent amount of damage at short range, but against jump bots, I think that would be ill-advised. Especially against pyros, that's really not a good idea to do. But pyros and jacks both would be problematic for that sort of commander. However, Rymark, with his rocket launcher battle commander, is able to get through this entire defense line with taking only minor scratch damage and actually repairing himself thanks to the auto repair system quickly enough that it won't matter. So at this point, the map has actually spread out pretty evenly. Rymark able to take his half and Corvus much more quick to claim his half. He was quicker to claim the center, but at this point it looks like Rymark able to successfully take his side of the map as well. So it's going to be an even split and no man's land down the center. Of course, there is still the north and south paths, which so far Corvus does not have any radar knowledge of. And neither does Rymark from the looks... No, Rymark still has no radar, period. I'm very surprised at this. Purely line of sight. It, that's bizarre. This game is... This game has radar in it. It's worth using. But yeah, Corvus Quark's not aware of what Rymark is doing to the north. And... Or if he is, he's only aware because he happened to see the workers go by on radar, which... If he's paying attention, he will have. I'm not sure if he was, though. I don't think he knows. But Rymark does have the potential for economic advantage... And he is attacked from the south as well. This one, Corvus, does know this is happening, though. He is well aware of something coming in from the south. At this point, he doesn't actually know... Oh, no, he does know that Rymark's going for puppies. So he knows that Rymark's going for the jump out factory. And Rymark has gotten radar. He does actually see everything that Corvus has been building, though he doesn't know what it is yet. But he does know it's there. Probably understands the center of the map. And Corvus, his favorite, the Stardust... Works out in order to get rid of one of the Pyros. As we saw in the last game, Corvus Corvax... Corvus Corax particularly likes his Stardusts. So him building that is of no surprise. However, that is... Between that and this Lotus, that's actually his only defense at the moment. Rymark, on the other hand, we saw in the last game, he is fairly fond of static defense. In this particular game, he's actually not focusing on it too much. He does have some of the choke points, which is exactly where he needs it. And given that he's the only bot player, he actually doesn't have to worry about... Rymark going along the cliffs, along these rocky areas in order to get through to him. However, at this point, it's a bit too late. These Lotuses are not up in time. The Panther is able to go through, tear apart the north side entirely, get rid of all these mexes. The Freaker able to get away because it is able to get onto the high ground here. And Puppy's coming along the side to try to deal with the Panthers. Three of them should probably die in the process, though. At the same time, Rymark advancing along the center while the Puppies come in here. And actually, no, they managed to get in, dealing a bit of damage. Don't quite manage to make the group stun go off, though. The Panther wasn't quite close enough to its allies. So not enough group stun, however. One of the Panthers is damaged, the other one did die. And Rymark's commander continued to push in through the center, but at the same time, a massive attack in the north already gotten rid of three metal extractors. Rymark goes down from 24 metal to 18 metal per second. And the Panthers continue to the main base. The Pyro just misses them, while Rymark continue to move into the center. Going up against a Banisher, this will probably not... Banisher and Reaper alike will not end well. Placeholder coming in to try to deal with the Banisher. Try to keep it in... Well, obviously keep it in place, as the name suggests. But the Reaper is going to be just tanking most of the damage. While the Pyro tries to get rid of the Banisher to very little avail. And Corvus's commander finishes that off. While the Reaper has moved back a bit in order to avoid getting hit too hard. Uh, unfortunately, the Placeholder not close enough to the Defenders. Doesn't quite lock it down next... Oh, it does! Never mind! The Defenders are close enough. Dealing the Reaper some damage. And Rymark... Level 3 commander getting Hellfire Grain on top of the rocket launcher. Setting nothing on fire. Unfortunately, did not do much good. At the same time, Corvus's Panthers coming along the backside will be able to shut down all of these power plants, take out the metal extractors, and there is a moderator that will help a lot. It's exactly what needs to be there. Unfortunately, on the wrong side of the solar plants, those Panthers are able to just deal a bunch of damage. We'll get rid of this metal extractor before they get successfully fended off either, and the moderator coming around the side, able to get rid of one of them. Is it actually, is it able to get rid of one of them? It's not quite getting stunned before it's able to kill it. Its reload time is apparently way too long. Managed to get one shot off, but Puppy help out with the rest. But even then, one panther still alive at a decent health. But these panthers are doing a wonderful job, and Rymark's commander he fully healed up, as has, well, the Reaper getting nearly fully healed up. The Banisher still heavily damaged, though. And Rymark continued to move in, taking the center out, while this panther over in the west, the east side of the map continues to harass, continues to deal some damage. Taking out the solar collector and moderator going to be built up, which will deal with the panther once and for all. Rymark is asserting the center pretty well, and the Freaker, having been safely squirreled away to the center of this particular hill, able to go back and rebuild the metal extractors with impunity. And I should point out that there actually is no way that Corvus is aware of this, I believe. 
No, Corvus is not aware that this has been rebuilt. He does not know at all. All he knows is he killed it, and he's lost his panther. Doesn't know it was rebuilt. Probably suspects that it has been. That's normally what you do. However, Corvus has to retrieve his commander, and this is actually the first comm wars I've seen since, well, since they pretty much nerfed the comms after they massively buffed the comms. And they nerfed them again to just 4 and 6 energy, got rid of the E-cell. Haven't seen comm wars like this since, but looks like Corvus going for personal cloak. Wow, okay. Cloak on top of basically super heat rays. While Rymark going for, well, mostly getting more for health. Not even going for modules, just saving costs on metal and going purely for as just the health, just the basic benefits of the commander chassis. And a couple monitors coming in, and this Reaper about to go down, actually, between all the defenders and Rymark's commander. Miter has helped out a bit as well, but not sure how much, honestly. And the Hellfire Grenade also helping out, though, admittedly, in this case, not so much. Rymark's commander, this might be his last stand, though. Trying to move up the hill, but... One more shot, and it's going to go down. That Reaper manages to get in. However, the Banisher does go down. The Reaper's not able to get a shot in. Ooh. Just barely able to get a shot in. And is it going to go down? Not quite. But it is targeting the Defender, not the Commander. And it does go down. The Commander does survive. Gets out of there. Builds up a few more Defenders. And as we know, Rymark is fond of his defenses. Surprisingly, though, has not taken the South Side. I think he might be trying to with his Commander right now. But he hasn't taken it, and that would be a... Avenue for economic advantage. Right now, Corvus does have fewer metal extractors take... Oh no, he has... He has all of his metal spots in the back taken, as well as two geothermal power plants, one of which is turning into a Moho geothermal power plant. Though his overdrive is working quite well for him. That being said, Rymark, probably about even. From the looks of it, he does have... Let's see, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 metal spots to... Looks like about nine. Or, no, eight actually. So, ten metal spots to eight. But Corvus does have overdrive, which is making up the difference pretty well, actually. And right now, getting another Reaper up, getting a further set of Reapers. So, still going for the Reapers while reclaiming the center of the map. So, yeah, Corvus between the reclaim field and the overdrive, he is getting an economic advantage right now on Rymark. While Rymark has more map control, he could take the south. It's a bit risky, but he could do it, for now at least, and he could very easily take his own base. Surprisingly, he has not. He didn't never actually took this metal extractor point. He lost this one, but he never took this one. Over in the center west. He took the one, like I said, in the northeast, but not the one center east. And uh, Rymark did pause the game at one point, but anyway, getting back into the game, Rymark does have Looks like possibly no more defense. And sending a jack down to the south, he knows the south is open. He can take it whenever he likes. But I think he wants to keep his commander near the center because it is a level 4 commander. He has put in a lot of metal into it. Probably doesn't want to keep it off the battlefield for too long. Just wait for it to heal up, build up defenses in the meantime, and then push forward. The jack's not a bad choice here. And sumo as well, which is not at all a surprising choice. Against reapers, I'm not sure I'm totally confident in it though. The jack's not a bad choice just due to the fact that it is fairly quick. And it is also quite tough, so the Reapers don't have to take a lot of shots to kill it. The Sumo, I'm not so sure about that. I mean, the Disruptor Beams will help, but really its big weapon is the Jump. Anyway, Corvus's Commander coming up to Rymarks, just now getting revealed, and it is right next to Rymarks. This is a very good mix, by the way. Cloaking Device on top of Heat Ray, and Rymarks Commander unable to get away. It's about to go down, trying to kill Corvus's Commander, but it won't happen in time. And Rymarks Commander goes down, Corvus's Commander stays in, and like I said, Cloaking on top of Heat Ray is a wonderful mix. You get right up to your opponent before they decloak you, and then the heat ray works best at short range, tears him to shreds, as we just see right now. That was a huge loss for Rymark. His sumo's coming up as well, but he lost his jack. He lost his commander. He's now getting shelled by oh my goodness. Getting shelled by a couple pillagers. Take out the center of the map, take out all the defenses here. As the sumo and moderators come in, but that's his main force was his commander. He's really got nothing to do work from there. More sumos and puppies coming in. Enough reclaim to make the puppies somewhat worthwhile. They will work out if he manages to take the reclaim field and the sumo will help, but even then the pillagers can just tear this apart. Sumo is coming in though. It is going to do what it can, everything it can. But the pillagers will be able to target it and probably will be able to hit it and kill it too. Especially now that they have line of sight. Rymark is able to see that. Retreats down. Gets the reaper in and one of the reapers is going to get hit. Yeah, even then, the jump is not particularly powerful. 1,000 damage, but for a unit with 6,000 health, doesn't mean much. 
Especially when it's once every 12 seconds or so. Or maybe a little less than that, but it doesn't matter. It's going down. That first emo about to go down. Won't be, will be able to jump again. It tries. Had its legs all ready to jump, but wasn't able to do so. So that's Sumo only get, able to get one jump in, and Reaper is ready, but even then... Not really going to work out too well, and the Pillagers once again tearing apart the center of the map. Keeping it locked down, this figure's probably going to go down pretty shortly. Same time, however, Pyro coming to the south side of the map, going to take out a few Metal Extractors. Actually, this Stardust, however, is going to be... that's going to tear it up. There's no way it's going to get through that. The Pyro, once again, stopped by a Stardust. Really, what is there that Rammer could do? I suppose he could go, if we ever air switch into Ravens and then just drop a bunch of bombs on top of all these forces, that could work decently well. For just Jump Bot Factory, the puppies aren't a bad idea. Jacks aren't a bad idea, Scuttles might actually work okay, and Firewalkers could... You know, Firewalkers would be too risky, I think. Firewalkers would just get overwhelmed by the Reapers. Although, that being said, Splash Damage Artillery would win out in this particular situation. Not that Rymark would necessarily know this. That's the only problem. I don't think he necessarily knows where that's up. He does know the forces are there, though he... No, he should know. What am I saying? Of course he knows. He has all this radar here. He knows what's here. He knows these are assault these are Reapers. He knows these are Pillagers. He knows what exists. He has full radar coverage. He's he's fine. He has overtaken the south side of the map, as well as the north side, but Rymark has to contend with Corvus's overdrive, which is pushing 7.5 metal on a single metal extractor. That is huge. And this Moho Plant, once it's done, is going to be even better for that purpose. Gunship Plant is up, but it hasn't been used to build anything yet. And Goliath coming up from the Heavy Tank Factory, because why not? Well, Corvus gets a level 5 commander. A few puppies come in to try to deal with it and actually do a fair amount of damage. But unfortunately, not going through the Reclaim Field first to get more of their number. Finally now doing so with Sumo as support, but still, that's not going to... It's going to be tricky. He, if he does move quickly, he will be able to get through this, get a few extra puppies, and then push that through to the Pillagers. That would work out fairly well. But at this point, a lot of them are going to die in the first few volleys. That's the hard part. They need to get through the artillery in order to get the reclaim, in order to get more of the number. At this point, they just have to re basically recoup what they lost in the rush. But I think he's not even going for that, not even trying, apparently, to get more of them. Apparently too worried about actually being able to do so. But he is able to double their number, basically reclaim what he lost in the first artillery strike. Losing more than another... Oh my goodness, losing all of them. Managed to take out... Maybe a, no, not even managed to take out a caretaker. Damages a couple caretakers, but doesn't manage to take any out. A couple pyros attacking from the north as well, but there will be a Stardust in place. It's being built up already. That should be up in time. And the Goliath has been built. However, the pyros not even going from the north. They're going straight to the center. They're gonna get rid of the pillagers directly. And it looks like more puppies might no more jacks are forthcoming. No puppies forthcoming, but at the same time, Reapers coming to the south side of the map. So attacking the center while. Sorry, Rymark attacking the center while Corvus is attacking the south. However, Rymark about to lose a sumo again thanks to that cloaked commander. That has been working wonders. Absolute wonders for him. The cloak plus heat ray. That is... That's a great combination. That's proven to be a wonderful combination. And Pyro is once again about to spot it. They won't be able to do much to it, though one of them does explode on top of its head. But even with that, it's not taking very much damage. It's... It's in no threat. However, that can't be said for Rymark's base, which is about to go down to these re these Reapers are... Well, they're going to end the game because Rymark throws in the towel, and that is it. So, interesting game, but yeah, it really came down to the Commanders, which is surprising given the changes, given the balance changes that have happened recently to the game. So, that was that, and I will have another one for you guys shortly, which will not involve Rymark or Corvus. It will instead... See who's gonna involve. It will be a game between Arc Shaman and Silent Shadow on Frozen Planet. Stay tuned for that. That'll be up in just a couple minutes.